everyone. Welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Kira, and this week I am going to use Sculpey Primo Pastels. This is a brand new set that they're releasing. And I'm going to cover a tin. So I've got a cute little Band-Aid style tin. This tin has a flip top. And this is typical of a coverable that you might find in our Create Along box, which is a monthly polymer clay subscription box. So this is one of the tins from the box. And I'm going to use Color Shift. This color is Emerald Flash. So it's a color shifting paint by Folk Art. And I'm, I have already rolled out there this clay came in six colors so the colors in here are rose quartz apricot mint green clear water blue pale amethyst and smoke gray so smoke gray i've rolled out to a number four on my pasta machine and i'm going to silk screen it with snails in the garden and this is one of the very first i think this is the second silk screen that i ever designed for create along and it's also one of the first silk screens ever printed for Create Along, and you can see how beautiful it still is because our silk screens are simply the best. Our orange silk screens are made in a different way than every other company out there. So, all you have to do to silk screen is press your silk screen down and use paint and a squeegee. You can also use. Um, you can also use powders, but today I'm using paint. So I've got a squeegee and I'm going to silk screen this by adding paint, which I don't even think I've opened this one yet. Oh, no, it's open. So we're gonna add paint along one side and drag it across the screen. Easy peasy. And then, of course, I'm going to stop the video so I can go rinse my silk screen out because you must clean your screens immediately because they are made of a material. And if you leave the paint on there, then it will clog it up. That's how silk screens work. So I'm just going to lift the corner here and make sure I'm getting coverage. And then maybe I'll decide I want a little bit more paint, maybe less. You can scrape it off if you added too much. You can add more if you added too little. I tend to be, I always do my silk screening on the less side and that sometimes hurts you because you want that paint to be really on there. You want to go in a couple different directions. And then I'm gonna go and clean the screen. Okay, I'm back and you can see my screen is clean and ready for another use. And to continue, I'm going to use a template. This is template 0420, not available yet. This actually is coming in the April Passion for Polymer magazine. So be sure to subscribe to that. So this, um, this one fits on this tin. So this nice big one here is gonna fit and wrap around a little bit. And then this one will be like a little centerpiece and it actually fits this deco disc that says breathe on it. So I'm gonna use this in that design and I'm going to use, since we're doing sort of a garden theme, I'm gonna use a Field of Roses texture sheet and create this background piece using that and the purple clay. And I just wanted to say that this purple, that the clay that came in this package is extremely fresh. It's like bubble gum. I actually had to leach this piece between a couple pieces of white paper to get it to the point where I could roll it and use it for a silk screen. So if that happens to you, all you have to do is make your sheet of clay flat as possible and put it between two pieces of regular copy paper until you can see some of the oils. It's called leaching, leaching into the paper, and that will 
help to get that clay a little bit less um, Gumby-like so that you can actually do something with it because sometimes if it's real real soft like this It can be hard to manipulate This is going to be okay because I'm going to use it on a texture sheet and it's going to release right off of it But when I go to use the orange and do the deco disc, I'm going to have to use a release because I know it's going to get stuck inside this disc. So that's going to happen in a few minutes Okay, so working with rubber stamps and texture sheets, everyone has their way of doing it, and this happens to be mine. Um, a lot of times, if you put your clay down and you put this texture sheet on top and press, the texture sheet is not sticky in any way, so it can move around a little bit. So I prefer to lay my clay on top of it and use a deli sheet so that I can sort of hold the clay down and press on the clay. And that allows my clay to pick up on the texture without moving all over the place. And then my finger can just slide gently over the back of the clay. And now when I release the clay from the texture mat, it's gonna be nicely textured like so. And now all I have to do is get, I'm going to get a tile. So I've got some unglossy tiles and my template. I'm just going to lay it down on top of these roses and sort of, I like to sort of press it down around the outside edge so that it stays put. And then get my very sharp X-Acto blade that has the really fine edge on it. And I like to do this so that it I'm cutting it and it's coming towards my body. And you just hold it upright. So once I get about halfway like this, I'm going to spin this whole thing around so that I can continue drawing the, the tool towards myself. So I'm not, it's a natural hand position and I'm not trying to do something weird with my arm and hand pushing it away from me. So you just have to, just have to get in there and figure out how is most comfortable for you so that you can make a nice clean cut okay so there's my template piece and this clay can go right back in the plastic container there so this is going to be the piece that goes right on top of that onto the tin and then next is going to be the orange so I said I would use a release with my deco disc because I know that my soft sticky clay will stick inside my stamp. So this is pretty easy. I keep a little thing of water. I keep a spritzer of three different things on my table. I have water, I have alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and I have acetone. And acetone I mostly use to clean up I have a glass surface under here, so I clean my glass with it and my metal tools. Like if my, if my um, blades get all gunked up, I will use acetone to clean those. I don't use it on my acrylic tools or anything because it will break down acrylic. So this is water marked with a W, and I'm just going to spritz my disc. In fact, I might do that over a napkin and then sort of tap off the extra water because I don't need a ton of water on there, just a little bit to keep my clay from getting all stuck up inside the disc. So I'm just gonna gently press and I can look from the front and see that I'm making contact with the design. And then I'm just gonna peel this back and I've got that pretty design and the word breathe 
on my clay. And then I had decided I would, see, I have dogs, so can't avoid the pet hair sometimes, but I decided I would use this little doodad to cut this out. I absolutely love my plastic deli sheets. They're good for so many things. So what I'm gonna use this for right now is to round the edges of my textured sheet just by using my finger, because it allows your finger to slide. So if you just put the deli sheet on there and don't you don't press it down on the clay, you just Use it to allow your finger to sort of press and slide on the edges of things. I love it for this. I'm just kind of rounding out that sharp edge that you get from using a template. See? And I'm going to do the same thing with my little breathe design before I pick it up and do anything else with it. Okay, so now my designs aren't so sharp looking and you now is the time to kind of touch them up because once I lay them on my tin, then I'm going to be ready for baking and there's not going to be a lot more that I can do to fix them. So another thing I will probably do is use some powders or maybe even paint after the fact to bring out some of those designs. So I definitely know I'll have to do something with the word because I want it to be nice and readable on my tin. So let's go ahead and cover the tin. So to do that, I'm just gonna release this off the backing. And I only did this to make it easy to handle. because the clay is very soft. And let me just say, there's nothing wrong with soft clay. A lot of people prefer it. It just depends on what you're gonna be doing with it. Sometimes it can be, it can make it maybe a little bit difficult to work with. And I'm gonna kind of pull and stretch on this just a little because it's not quite long enough to make it all the way around my tin. But polymer clay is very stretchy, especially when it's thin like this. So just gently, I'm just gently making some extra length on this. And I'm going to, of course, start below where the lip of the tin is because I, I want the tin to be able to shut. So I'm going to press this down onto the surface. Since my paint is dry, I'm good to go. And I'm kind of stretching as I come around the back. And if I don't make it all the way around, I'll figure something out later to decorate back here. just want to pay attention when you're covering something like this to the areas around the hinges. You don't want anything to prevent the tin from opening later. So I'm going to cut down a little of this. And make sure that my tin comfortably opens back here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my blade around the bottom and cut off the excess clay. And 
And you can use your fingers to make sure everything looks nice and neat. Everything's meeting the edges but not going over. This is one of the ways that you make things look finished. All right. And then let's take a look back here. So I actually have a little bit, like a little triangle that I can cut off here to fit the space that's bare over here. And the design even kind of matches up with the polka dots. So I'll just press that in place. And you can work on smoothing your seams. And then we'll cut off that little extra bit of clay that I just added that's hanging off the bottom. And when I'm finished with this, no one will know the difference. Kind of like when I was a child, my mother, we, we, she wallpapered our living room and we ran out of wallpaper in the middle of the project, not in the middle, but like towards the end. And she pieced together this wallpaper. You would have never known that like one whole section of the wall was little p bits and pieces. <laughs> she was so careful, I remember that. Okay, so now our box is covered for the most part and we can do the decorations. So now to get this piece on here, we just need to release it from the tile and I have a nice bendy, uh, this is a Sculpey blade, it's the long bendy one and it's good for doing stuff like this. So you just work it under pieces that you have stuck down to a tile or a piece of glass and you can pick them up. So I'm going to center this here and it's going to stick real well because like I said the clay is very um, soft. And then I'm going to pick up this breathe piece and put it in the middle of that. And now it's just a matter of embellishing how you like to. So I'm going to use some powders, inks, and probably some of these because these are the right color. These are some square hotfix cabochons in a really pretty colorway that's like that purple and greens. So I definitely know I want to put one on each corner of this. So pretty. And then, you know, you might decide you want to do some around the top or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction into how to cover a tin. This is going to stick to this. This type of design where you wrap the whole body of the tin is ideal because this clay is not going to fall off. Once it's baked, it's going to be on there unless you really, really tried hard to, to peel it off or something. Okay, so if you want to see the completed project, you'll check out the April issue of Passion for Polymer magazine. And come back next time for more Polymer Clay TV. We do a new video every week. Thank you for joining me.